So all of us in the black in college basketball and your guest in NBA following suit, sitting here with 64 bets and an ROI plus 8.02%. Very impressive. 36 and 28, 56.3% plus 5.13 units. Average line minus 110. And here to break down the seven game card. And what a real, you know, glorious seven game card because so often our the star of Wednesdays, who you're about to see here on screen, has had to deal with 12 and 13 game cards. So a nice seven game card for us to deep dive that will also make it. A little easier, I think, for you guys on the big li uh, live stream basketball show tonight that he co-hosts alongside Dabby Cab. So without further ado, please welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada, star of Medicaid Mondays and all about the hoops. And of course, the NBA section of our Betting with the Bag Wednesday shows. Please welcome Dutch Boy Fresh. <laughs> Dutchy, what's good, my man? How are you? Uh, yeah. Jimmy the motherfucking bag. Yo, the NBA is a hell of a drug. And you're looking at the plug. Yeah, man. Yo, shout out to the pimp, Mikey Money. Man, I can't help but to think of. I'm sure y'all seen. I'm sure you've seen it, uh, Jim. You remember Dave Chappelle? Dave Chappelle, the, uh, the scene where it's the wrap it up. You know, you bring out the thing, wrap it up. And that's all I can think about this motherfucker, <laughs> man. Shout out to the pimp. But wrap it up, god damn it. Uh, oh, man. It's good to be back with you on the West Coast Wednesday. You said it, Jim, a light card, a seven piece, you know, yeah. a seven piece. So Perfect. I can't lie. I was, I was a little happier. <laughs> if if every card could be seven games, uh, it's a great. perfect amount of games. I agree completely. So let's get right to work because there's some spots that I already really like and would have moved on them. <laughs> but I thought, you know, keep calm talk it out uh and also you know let the market mature and uh, we've seen these uh you know fully broken down markets uh really show opportunities so let's get right to work we start at 7 p.m eastern the toronto raptors 17 and 33 7 and 20 on the road at the charlotte hornets 10 and 39 5 and 20 at home i tell you it took two weeks it took two weeks for me to not be able to watch RJ Barrett in the fourth quarter of a basketball game. I can't, I can't stand it. I can't stand the la the. It's like no snap on his passes. The pat some the the turnovers he drops in the fourth quarter. If you've got action on the Raptors and you're watching out there, I I'm starting to see what everybody was going through with the Knicks, and it's tough to watch. It's there's just no getting around it. Uh, he's been extremely difficult. To watch, uh, he will be there tonight. Gary Trent, game time decision. Porter, also a game time decision for the Hornets. Uh, Lamelo Ball out, uh, Williams out, and Nilakina, Martin, and Hayward all game time decisions. So it's a pretty ugly game here. The Raptors, oh, we're gonna go back to pinnacle line moves. Uh, the Raptors sitting at uh, Minus seven and a half. This opened up at six and a half. Uh, six and a half moved to seven, got to seven and a half. Uh, now, since it got to seven and a half, you know, there's been a slight, very slight move towards the Hornets. I mean, it, you can get that minus seven and a half at minus 101. Uh, the plus seven and a half is juiced. Then, from a total side of things, oh, I thought I had that set up. I don't. I'll make sure that's set up for the next one. But let me just flip over to total here. From the total side of things, we're sitting here with a 226. Uh, opened up at 226. Uh, got up to 227. Uh, then dropped down to 225. Uh, jumped back up to 226 about an hour and a half ago. Then we'll go into the cash flow for this one. We have move over there and get the full all market. You have 34% of the tickets and 53% of the cash on the Hornets. So there are bigger bets coming in on the Hornets, but the line's not moving towards them. Then you have 65% of the tickets and 87% of cash on the over. Uh, and uh, Troy Torrance says you might want to consider Bet Chris. Yeah, I love Bet Chris and Bookmaker. Uh, they're very sharp, uh, <clears throat> very sharp books that I do respect. Uh, you know, that, that you, we could easily be using 
a Beckris bookmaker line moves or pinnacle line moves there. They're pretty similar. Uh, so let's go. Raptors, 17 and 33, 7 and 20 on the road. Hornets, 10 and 39, 5 and 20 at home at Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have Toronto 1 and 4 over their past five. They've lost three straight. This is the final game of a six game road trip in Charlotte, half empty. Do the Raptors really care about being here? Uh, are they? Have they all bought in with Darko? Because if they've all bought in with Darko, he should be able to have them up against the worst, arguably, you know, one of the worst teams in the league uh, in an empty arena, right? Should, should. Uh, Toronto playing 21st fastest pace over the last five games, one and four over that stretch. And they're shooting 40.3% from three. They're not that good from outside. Uh, you know, their three-point numbers have improved since the trades of OG and Spicy P. But they're shooting better than they have all year, and they're not winning games. 47.3% uh, from the field in the five-game stretch and 40.3% from three. Then Charlotte 0-5 over the past five games. Playing at 17th fastest pace, 98.8 possessions in the game, 44.7% from the field, 36.5% from three. So this is a Raptors third game in four nights. This is the Hornets' third game in four nights. The Hornets coming off their eighth straight loss, 124-118 at home versus the Lakers on Monday. So you have to ask yourself: the most important key to this game is it's the final game of a long road trip in a half-empty arena. Can you trust the big favorite? Dutch, take it away. Game one on our card, Raptors Hornets. Yeah, man. Shout out to Top Set in the building. I see my guy. Yeah, the Heatles, man. It was good money. Easy motherfucking money. Good shit. Uh, shout out to our boy J Mac, AOD, Res Mob. I see you, my dude. Appreciate the kind words. Uh, yeah, I like the Raptors here, Jim. You know, and uh, they got smacked. Smack the fuck around in, in New Orleans. They didn't even show up. Down by 17 at the end of one. Losing the game by 38 points. They got some talent on this basketball team. I think they do step up for the coach here. Uh, been a rough road trip, as you mentioned. Losing three straight. Um, I played pretty well against OKC, I, I would say. You know, I played decent enough. You know, didn't get blown out as in the prior two. Um, and definitely didn't play as bad as they did against the Pelicanos. But I expect the team, led by Scotty Barnes, you know, they got the new addition to quickly back in the lineup. Bruce Brown and I, I mean, the lineup, Gary Trent went through shoot around, should be in there. You got quickly Trent, Brown, Polo, and Barnes. I mean, this, they should be able to smack around these bummy ass Hornets pretty well, especially considering last time they went to Charlotte, they did lose a close one by three, actually, in Charlotte. Prior to that, that was earlier this year. Prior to that, they have won five out of the last six mini, uh, meetings uh, pretty easily. They have split uh, the, the meetings, obviously, this year. Now, the Hornets are 0-3 this year so far, or, you know, uh, excuse me, this month in February. They've lost three straight in a row this in the last three games, Jim. Their average margin of loss is 19 points per game. Pretty much, they let Rozier go. They were bad with Rozier, and they've got worse since he's left. Um, they do got guys that can put the ball in the bucket. Andrew, uh, you know, Miller's coming around, looking like a looking like a real, you know, going to be a real NBA player. Uh, but outside of that, they don't have too much anything. This team's more about get yours you know it's more about you know they're flashy they, they they're just they're not bought in any means i wouldn't even be surprised if uh hey a couple of these more guys move out of hornets but i like the raptors first half here um they are one and four on this road trip they do uh you know it is you mentioned it the last game of a six game road trip but i just believe simply losing by 38 you know how being getting punked kind of on this trip that they want to end it in a, in a nice fashion. They want to go home feeling themselves a little bit. And who's better than the motherfucking Charlotte Hornets? Um, I just think, you know, after losing by 38, Scotty Barnes, you know, uh, Trent, Gary Trent being a dookie going back to Tobacco Road, hit them threes. Uh, I think they got enough to, to get this done here. But I'm going to take them early because I could see Charlotte hanging around and maybe getting a backdoor cover. So I got the three and a half first half. Toronto is good money. I get it. I get it. We uh, it does cost a nickel minus three and a half minus one fifteen here uh, on the offshores. What's the four? Uh, the four is minus one oh five. Uh, let me see if I can beat that here. Let me take a check here. Uh, so the first half. Yeah, it's um minus one oh five is the four. Minus one fifteen is the three and a half. What would you prefer? 
Yeah, we'll take the four. I think I think it's clear either these boys come up and are up by double digits very early because they're like as I mentioned, they're down 17. I, I like the first quarter minus two, Jim, but you know how I am with these first fucking quarters. I lock it in and it's an L for me for some reason. So I'm gonna stay disciplined, not bet the first quarter, but I, I think I think they come out early after getting smacked around by 17. Uh, the game before they came out, we're up by 10 against OKC in that first at the end of one. I expect more of um, that. So, yeah, I think it'll be double digits. So we'll take the four uh, minus one of five. You got it. I A lot of it makes sense. Um, if, they, if they're still bought in with Darko, you have to think that. I mean, that they bounce back after getting destroyed and not showing up. The problem is, I don't know. I don't know the character of this basketball team right now. I don't know what they're going to do on the final game of a road trip. I just. I don't know either. I just think the roster and the talent is leaps and bounds better than, than, the, than the Charlotte Hornets. And yeah. the Charlotte Hornets have continue, continuously lost games and lost them by a big margin. And you get the and you get the Raptors in, in a spot where they just got completely embarrassed. Yeah. And, and those are legit valid points that would make you want to put your money down on the Raptors. I, I get it. I I just I, I'm not I, I don't know. I and mean, when I don't know I, I seem to I, I just don't want to uh, you know what the problem is is I'm getting a little close to this basketball team again. And when you get close to a team they you know the losses hurt. Uh, watching yeah. them not seal the deal against the Thunder, watching them not and then not show up against Pelicans, uh watching RJ Barrett, you know, pass the ball like it's shoot around in the fourth quarter in a few minutes. Like I just, it's yeah, uh, I'd much rather have more Bruce Brown than RJ Barrett, but I don't know how long Bruce Brown will be in Toronto. Yeah. And, and sadly, I think that uh, RJ Barrett's going to be around for a while here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mikey says uh, he's close to the flyers and that wind pissed him off last night. You know, it's, it, it's the, the break does such wild things and we're going to have to deal with that here in NBA shortly. And, you know, NBA season ends April 14th regular season i was surprised to see how early that is that's earlier than the nhl regular season so yeah, for those of you who want to get that nba cash take advantage of every situation right now uh dan kelly has oh and serious business moving on toronto first quarter and full time for our guy serious business and dan kelly on the Cavs minus four first quarter here against the wizards Cavs minus four and minus um uh, 104 over at Heritage. And Dan Kelly just celebrated his 69th birthday. Uh, Dan, we love you, man. Uh, let's give a little homage to our friend, Mr. Dan Kelly. So here we go. The Happy Cavaliers birthday. are, I've got first half up, so they're minus seven first half. But let's go to the full game and head over to Penny for the information. Sitting right now at minus 11 and a half. They opened up at minus 10 and a half, uh, got up to 11, and then 11 and a half. It is slightly juiced towards them right now. From a total side of things, we're sitting with a 234 and a half. This opened up at 237, so we've had a, quite a drop towards the under. We get over to the cash flow in this spot. First off, you have 83% of tickets and 97% of the cash. Now it's 84 and 97 now uh, with 22,750 tickets uh, counted. Then on the total, you have 56% of the tickets on the under and 91% of the cash. So you have that sharp uh, action uh, towards the under. Uh, Kong, I said uh, 69. I said 69. Uh, Kent Davis says Dan Kelly's 24 years old. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, and there he is, uh, our guy, Dan Kelly. Uh, he's a big part of our squad, man. <clears throat> so here we go. Cleveland uh, winning basketball game. Six straight victories. Coming off that 136-110 at home over Sacramento. Uh, over their last five games, 14th fastest pace in the league, 98.9 possessions a game. And 50.9% from the field and 38.5% from three, shooting the ball very well. Washington, two and three over their past five, playing the fourth fastest pace in the league, 101.9 possessions a game, 46.9% uh, from the field, and just 29% from three. It's amazing that their pace has slowed down a little bit. Their three point shootings got a little worse, uh, and they started winning basketball games. Uh, so, this is the first half of a back to back. Notice that Dan Kelly's focusing on the first quarter. 
They play at Brooklyn tomorrow night. We're going to talk about all the spots on today's card where teams are on the first half of a back-to-back. Uh, the Wizards coming up their third straight loss, 140-112 at home versus Suns on Sunday. These losses have been absolutely uh, horrific. Uh, here, I can uh, help. Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, here, let me help get this uh, over here for... He's making a challenge. God damn it. Uh, there we go. Uh, there we go. Okay. So uh, here we go. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was You couldn't read it because he... Uh, he did okay. Let's focus here. Uh, Wizards coming off their third straight loss, one forty one twelve at home versus Suns on on Sunday. All three losses on this home home stand have been, uh, you know, ugly. Uh, there was the one ten one oh two loss. I think what to the Heat. I don't have it in front of me, but the the other two losses have been just horrific. Yeah. And the home stand ends this evening. Uh, take it away for us here. Interesting spot. Wizards at home to the very hot Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, man. Big shout out to the birthday boy, uh, DK. Big, yeah, as you said, big part of the chat. Love love, uh, love his insights. Uh, I like where he's looking at here, man. I could only fade um, the Wizards here. Nothing official for me, Jim. I was thinking Cavaliers here. Cavaliers first half is <laughs> the best thing going. So he's cutting in first quarter. You know you know how if I like the first half, I like the first quarter. I just, you know, I bet first half. So that's, that's what it is. I expect the team to come out early and, and do what they do. And uh, the Cavaliers, man, they not only the best thing going in the first half early in basketball games. I mean, they're damn near playing the best basketball in the NBA um, outside of the Clippers. Uh, but that's definitely in the Eastern Conference, they're the most consistent team. They won 15 out of the last 16 motherfucking basketball games. I mean, they're, they're a very good basketball team. Um, and they're getting healthy. Uh, Cavs have won six straight meetings versus these boys. I mean, it's big brother, little brother type shit when they see the Washington Wizards. They're 2-0 and this year, Jim. And this number stood out to me. The average margin of win in these two games, Jim, 31 motherfucking points per game. 31 motherfucking 24, and then they blew them out by even obviously more than that uh, second time around. So it, it's not – I mean, there's levels to this shit, and obviously the Cavaliers are on a whole another motherfucking level uh, than the Washington Wizards. So I would look early. I, I, I you know, I co-signed with DK's talking, and uh, I, I would probably look team total over because they pretty much picked their number – uh, that they want to drop. And these boys are real nice from deep. I mean, uh, with obviously uh, st- led by Mitchell, you got Garland back there. You got Struess in the corner. You got this kid, Sam Murrow off the bench. You got Niang. You got Levert playing some be- some of the best six-man basketball. Um, I talked about how they're leading um, in the last, you know, 20 to 22 games of the season. They're leading in three-point attempts. They love to shoot the three-pointer. They're leading and makes in three-point attempts as well. So, um, you got to guard the perimeter with the Cavaliers, and I don't think the Wizards will do that. So I could only look Cleveland here. Washington has not covered in five straight at home. They're 7-17 seven and 17 against the number at the house this year. And you mentioned it, Jim. When they lose, they usually lose um, in fashion. So I would I would expect the Cavaliers to handle business. Um, as, you, as, I, as you did mention, though, it is a, a first half of a back-to-back. So I, I definitely like the early looks a little more. And you have mentioned, I know you've talked about that you fade, you know, so I don't know if you're liking the Wizards here because you like to fade a heavy favorite on the first half of a back-to-back. Is that correct? I do. I do, but I do not. Uh, my, first off, my ROI having anything to do with Wizards is not being good. And uh, But uh, the Cavs, just like look at Dan Kelly. He says, let me tell you about the Cavs. I've been a fan of 50, for 54 years. This team is focused. I, I don't want to mess with them. I don't want to yeah. mess with them. They're bought in. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to uh, not. Yeah. This wasn't actually one of the ones that, that uh, interests me. The next game interests me, but the w- movement's just insane. A shout out to our guy, Wild Hound says, Good evening from Berlin, watching night two of the darts tomorrow. Our guy, Wild Hound. Uh, BJ, uh, best bet uh, here in business for our next spot. Uh, and let's talk about this giant market move because BJ's best bet here is Golden State Warriors, Philadelphia Eagles, or sorry, Philadelphia 76. Uh, Embiid <laughs> leaves, and I don't care, I guess, is what's happening here. Uh, Ron Crawford in the house. NHL play of the day is the New York Rangers. I will be joining you on that. I, I That wasn't part of my initial bets in NHL. Uh, Ron, let me copy and paste that, but I will be joining you after breaking it down. 
here. So let me just pop that uh, here. But we are going up against C-Mac. Uh, C-Mac is on the Tampa Bay Lightning. There's been a big move towards Tampa Bay Lightning. But let's get back into this uh, NBA spot. And NCAA uh, play day, Providence and Toronto. Perfect. Beautiful. You were right in line uh, with us. But let's get into this spot. So BJ gets the Warriors minus one and a half. We're now sitting at a five. Let's start yeah. there. Uh, what is the story for this huge move? Is it Maxi being listed as a game time decision? Yeah, he missed shoot around, I believe, uh, with the okay. illness. Okay, so that is the giant market move. Uh, Maxi missing shoot around. We already know, you know, Embiid out, Melton out, Covington out, Batoon out, Morris, Maxi, and House game time decision. So this team's getting stripped. Uh, initially, <coughs> this was a spot where I wanted to back the Sixers. Initially. Uh, Green and Wiggins are game time decisions, as we know. Chris Paul and, and Peyton are out. And uh, BJ says, if the Warriors win today, I'm fading them heavy tomorrow versus Pacers. Because I felt that that was a game that was going to be more important. Uh, now, uh, maybe that's the wrong way of, of looking at, at at this one here. Uh, Warriors three and two over the past five, playing at the sixth fastest pace in the league. One one point three six possessions a game, forty nine percent from the field, thirty five point five percent from three. They're shooting the ball pretty well. The Sixers, 1-4, and four, uh, playing with the 23rd fastest pace, 98.1 possessions a game, 45.9 from the field, 34.9 from three over that time period. As I said, this is now a five-point spread. Uh, it's sitting right now at uh, plus five. It is a juice to the Warriors, so five-and-a-halves are coming. Uh, we don't see them anywhere yet, but they are on the way. From a total side of things here, we have a... 234 and a half <coughs> excuse me this opened up at 237 and initially was going up got up to 238 now at 234 and a half and uh von polo says uh, i was about to say the same thing i hope the warriors win so i can smash the pacers tomorrow on his birthday king al says give me the sixers if i can get a seven he will wait uh, mikey money says 76ers are 0 and 12 against the spread against a team that were favored against last meeting so let's take a look at the cash flow then for this spot. You have 83% of the tickets and 97% of the cash on the Warriors. 67% of the tickets and 82% cash on the over. A Warriors coming off that 109.98 win at Brooklyn on Monday. This is the first half of back-to-back. -back. Their five-game road trip ends tomorrow night at Indiana. Sixers coming off their second straight loss, 118-102 at home versus the Mavericks on Monday. It's too bad that Max is sick because it's game three, but game four of uh, four-game homestand. It's a spot I would have liked to have backed the Sixers. Take it away for us here, Dutch Warriors, Sixers. Is there anything that interests you? Yeah, man. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not mad at that that one and a half from BJ. I mean, that's a good number, obviously. Now, um, I wonder what it is though, Pimp. You're giving us that 0 and 12 stat. What is it when they don't when they lose outright uh, when they come back? What are they against the spread? Because you know, I was looking to back Philly here. To be quite honest with you, I kind of had the same as you because you know they these two teams played. You know, a little over a week ago in, in the Bay, um, Warriors beat them by eight. I'm, I was looking maybe to get Sixers, but this Sixers team, man, they really a hot mess right now. They lost six out of the last seven. Um, you know, haven't covered only covered three of the last ten basketball games, and it's really due to the injury. It started with Embiid; they tried to push his ass back. Now, obviously, unfortunately, with the meniscus, um, Tobias Harris been in and out of lineup, and now we're dealing with. We're dealing with um, obviously Maxi's news today, and this—I mean, this is this, the lineup is just—I mean, this is not a lineup you want to be back in. You got uh, House, Mac, you know, now no, probably no Maxi in there. You got Harris, Reed, and Ubre. This is the starting lineup for the 76ers. Not what you expect when you bet want to bet on this basketball team. Um, they do, you know, traditionally play pretty well um, against these Warriors. Um, you know, they—they've covered. Uh, three out of the la uh, 13 out of the last 16, excuse me, in, in Philly, you know, against the Warriors. So I was looking at it as a get, a get back spot. I figured a lot of people would be on the Warriors. And the Warriors are actually a team that I, I'm looking to back a little bit more now. But I was looking for, I was kind of had the same thought as you, Jim. They'd be maybe a little bit more focused on Indiana with all the, with them being not being here in Philly and then obviously just beating them uh, not too long ago there at the house. Um, but yeah. The, the injuries are just a little too much and, and a lot of news they need to be there. I think the Sixers are going to be making some moves as well. So uh, my boy, you know, our boy Trout Ram been cleaning up on that Ubre over 
the threes. That's probably a good look. And then Kaminga, man. Kaminga is the best thing going. Clay Thompson ain't happy about it. But if you but everybody who's been backing uh, you know, Kaminga, uh, whether it be points or points, rebounds, and assists, you're very happy with it. Uh he's definitely becoming the second best player on that team. And uh I like what I'm seeing out of Kaminga. So anything with Kamin Kaminga's name on it, I wouldn't be mad at. And probably take a look at that Uber A threes because uh that shit just continues to hit. Um, but yeah, I, I'm staying off this game due to the injuries. This does seem like some fugaziness to me, Jim. This, this I'm trying to fade it. You know, this seems like this could be some fuckery, some classic NBA shit right here. Um, because I know a lot of people are going to go to the window with the Golden State Warriors. Ninety-seven percent of the cash right now on the Warriors. I'm just ain't nobody betting the Sixers. That's, That's uh, why I was like, hmm, okay, maybe it'd be appealing, you know. It's too bad. I, I need Maxi out there, Jim. I need yeah, that's what I was gonna I'm say. on it. All right. Um, let's roll on. But our guy Wildhound says his three leg parlay Ivory Coast to win. That game pops off in 90 minutes. Longwood minus seven and Sixers plus four and a half. AFCON semifinals is also going to play Ivory Coast to beat a Dominican or D DR Congo and both teams to score. All right. Let's roll on here. Oh, um, sorry, Debbie. You're saying uh, tweeted out minus one and a half for the first half earlier. Let's quickly go back to your uh, first half. Okay, cool. Uh, so for is that for Texas A&M or whiskey? It's probably A&M. Yeah, A&M. There are a couple. Okay, sir. Sure, man. Good call. Uh, I'll give you the minus one and a half, minus one uh, ten. All right, let's roll on. Next up for us here, we have the Atlanta Hawks, 22 and 28, 10 and 14 on the road to the Boston Celtics, 38 and 12. 23 and three at home at TD Garden, Boston. We have Atlanta four and one over the past five. Had their four game winning streak snapped in that 149 144 uh, at home uh, versus the Clippers on Monday. They're playing at the fastest pace in the league right now over the past last five games 104.13 possessions a game and shooting the ball very well 50.4% from the field, 38.2% from three. The Celtics three and two over their past five. They have won three of their last four. Four, coming off a 40-point win at home versus the Grizzlies on Sunday. This is also game four of a five-game homestand. Uh, generally a spot I don't want to fade the home team. <clears throat> and they're shooting 45.9% from, from the field, 35.7% from three, but you know they can defend the perimeter. So let's take a look at the line history. We have the uh, Celtics now are 12.5-point favorites, so the line is moving towards them. Uh, this opened up at 12 and a half. Uh, you know, it, it got down to 12. It never got to 11 and a half uh, here at Penny. Uh, then from a total standpoint, we are dealing with a 244. Uh, this opened up at 243 and a half, uh, got up to 245 before there was buyback. And then cash flow wise, we have, 51% of the tickets and 77% of the cash on the Atlanta Hawks. Then you have 78% of the tickets and 90% of cash on the over. Uh, Troy Torrance says Celtics are being priced like the best team in the NBA, and it's not even close. Um, so uh, here we go. And we have the uh, alarm going off uh, for Dutch here. Uh, Dutch, no worries, man. Do you need uh, – that's all good. Uh, you can't rock with, uh, with the alarm going off. Is it uh, horrible? Yeah, bro, yeah. this the condo. I can't do nothing about it. So no, it's, uh, it's all good. Yeah, I'm gonna no worries. back out and I'll come back on when it stops. Okay, yeah, no worries. No worries. Uh so let's roll here. Uh Patrick Burns gave us the Celtics minus eleven and a half in this one. You know, this is a huge number. And with the way Atlanta's playing, you would think that they could stay within it. But this is just a sweet spot here for me. Fourth game of a five game homestand. And Brizzy saying Atlanta plus 12 is on his mind. Uh, I'm not interested in moving on it. Uh, it just doesn't. Um, generally, it would be. But uh, it is not the uh, fourth game, five game. You know, this is a perfect setup for the team not to come out uh, as perfect. You know, just beating a terrible Grizzly squad by 40 uh, would actually make me think that Atlanta early would be appealing. Uh, Stimmy OG on Atlanta plus 12 and a half. I... Uh, I can't, uh, I can't fire here. So let's move on. 7.30 p.m. Eastern. We have the San Antonio Spurs 10 and 45 and 19 on the road. At the Miami Heat, 26 and 24, 13 and 12 at home at the Caseo Center in Miami, Florida. 
The Spurs coming off their four straight loss, 117-101 at home versus Cleveland on Saturday night. And this is game one of a back-to-back. They play at Orlando tomorrow night. We've already heard. Oh, beautiful. Back in business. I love it. I love it. No joke, bro. Uh, let's quickly uh, flash back, uh, Jose de Hawk Celtics. Um, I I can't. I traditionally, after a team wins by forty at home, I would want to fade them or fade them at least early. But this is a pretty comfortable spot. Game four of a five game home stand. Uh, did you have any interest in Hawk Celtics? Uh, yeah, my fault about that, Jim. I, I like oh, the. Look. Um, I, I honestly, I, I like the C's here, but. I think it's more of a team total probably aspect. I I could look the over here too. I I mean, I thought the Hawks were kind of, you know, playing a little bit better basketball. It's more of a spot against fading the Clippers last the other night when I took them plus three, they were right there too, you know, but they just don't have the defense, man. They're beat up on the injuries. No Capella. Um, They have absolutely nothing to stop Boston. They're going to pick their numbers. So um, heavy lean to the team total over uh, for the Boston Celtics. And um, I could only look uh, over in the team, to- uh, excuse me, over in the actual basketball game, 244 and a half. Uh, but, yeah, I think Boston picks their number. I understand what you're saying about, you know, off a huge win. Um, but they're just they're just uh, they're just on another level than the motherfucking Atlanta Hawks. So it's uh, nasty Nate in the building, Mr. Trifecta. I could see that, um, you know, the Boston has haven't been in trouble, though, covering the number full game of late. O- I'm only covered one in the last five, Jim. Um, however, they are. They have covered seven out of the last eight against the Atlanta Hawks in, in Boston in Boston, and uh, are 10 and 2 ATS last 12 overall um, against the Atlanta Hawks. So it's kind of big brother, little brother type shit when it comes to them. Um, and the Hawks are fading on the road. Haven't covered, uh, only covered one of the last eight road games um, the Atlanta Hawks have. So um, it's Boston or nothing here for me, but I think it's more uh, points. Um, I think Boston pretty much just picks their number. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I'd love even even to take the Hawks first quarter, but I can't even and, and won't. So let's move on. 7.30 p.m. Eastern, we have the San Antonio Spurs 10 and 45 and 19 on the road. Miami Heat 26, 24, 13, 12 at home. Over the past five, Spurs are playing 17th fastest pace in the league, 98.8 possessions a game, shooting 46 from the field and 32.9 from three. Dan Kelly says, love the Spurs money line. So <clears throat> Tory Coker says that his best bet is the Miami Heat, and that surprises me. It surprises me because the Heat cared very much about the game last night. Right. And I just don't see how they care here. And it scares me that Tory likes the Heat as much as he does. It 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 really uh I this was this the next game was the main one for me, but uh that being the Pelicans Clippers. But this one I was expecting to find a a move on the Spurs here in this spot. And I've been pretty good with the Spurs in the last little while. Uh, They've been, as I've kind of slipped down to uh, into the red, slightly into the red on the season. It's not on the Spurs. Why I've done that. Uh, I had the Spurs at home against the Pelicanos. Uh, They lost that one by one. We had them plus eight and a half. Uh, and again, this is game one of a back-to-back. They played Orlando tomorrow night. But if you watch the the minute situation for the Spurs, uh, they they're almost they're almost coached as if there's a game the following day. Uh, nobody plays heavy minutes here, and the Heat are on that second half of a back-to-back. So, Tori, I'd love uh, you to jump in and add to why it is that you like the Heat the way you do. Stimmy OG big on the Spurs plus eight and a half in the over, and Dan Kelly loving the Spurs money line. So 121.95 at home over the Magic last night. It was a game they cared about. Uh, I know that they were one game back in the division, uh, but you know they wanted to send a message to the Magic. And, and are they able to turn it on again here? That is the question. So let's take a look at the line history here for this one. We have the Spurs sitting at plus eight. I'm very interested in them. Uh, they opened up at plus eight. Uh, they have not moved off of this number. Then from a total side of things, we're sitting here with a 226 and a half uh, minus 108 to the over this opened up at 224 and dropped to 223 before this climb up to 226 and a half and stimmy talking about how he likes this over and then cash wise here it's 52 percent of tickets 58 percent of cash on the spurs that's why the line's not moving 56 percent of tickets and 96 percent of cash on the over and we see the line moving heavy so yeah i'm 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 interested in the spurs take it away for us here dutch do the heat are the Heat able to get up back-to-back games? 
Yeah, man, I wouldn't count on that. I, I kind of like if I'm more uh, where Coker's looking, I would look more first half. I could see the Heat maybe continuing a little bit of the feel good. Uh, but San Antonio, man, they've been they've been a little bit sticky of lately. Um, so I could see. I had a feeling you'd like the Spurs here. Um, and I love the I love the Heat last night. I don't I don't I would not back them tonight. I think they put a lot in that game um, last night. And I think San Antonio, you know, they might come in there, you know, team under pop. You don't expect them to probably go out there and be uh, wilding out too much in South Beach. They might come in there and try to, you know, actually focus a little bit. And um, I can see Wimby having a, a good game tonight. Uh, but I, I can't back the San Antonio Spurs. I can't. You know, Miami did go to San Antonio and beat them by five um, earlier this year. Um, they beat them five out of the last six, you know. Um, so, do I expect the Heat to give a fuck about this basketball game? I don't. Uh, but I know they do have a, a – there's a talent level, and it's clearly higher than what San Antonio is bringing to the table. So uh, what it comes down to me is if, if if the Heat are knocking down the perimeter shot like they were last night, I mean, it's good money. If they're knocking down those threes and, and uh, moving the ball, um, they'll run San Antonio off the court. Uh, but – so I would look more early if you like Miami, but yeah, uh, I could see where people like the full game with San Antonio. It, it kind of it seemed like a spot um, last night to fade to bet. It, it, when I was breaking it down, it looked like a spot to back. Obviously Miami last night and look to fade on the next night, but I just can't. Mm. Begin. Uh, I just can't. I just don't have confidence in San Antonio. Although you have a good read on them, Jim, and people have been you know making money off San Antonio as a big dog. See, I think the Spurs play their hearts out tonight. And get beaten badly tomorrow. And playing their hearts out, who knows if they cover? Uh, you know, they ate. Uh, Stimmy also on the Spurs team total over. Tori saying, uh, Hero said that uh, Jimmy and Hero said that they're going to take these last seven game series before the All Star break. I get that. I get that. And they sh certainly showed it last night. I, I just, <clears throat> it's not easy. It's not easy when you know you have your, your, a game back in the division and you want to send a message to your in state rival and then, the Spurs come in here uh, and we saw what happened when the Pelicans didn't take the Spurs seriously. And we, you know, talked about that, bet it, cashed it easily. I'm, I, at this point, I don't have any action on these first uh, four games. So the Spurs are going to be on my card at plus eight, uh, going to be on my card at plus eight. And uh, it makes me very nervous to be on the other side of you, Tori. Uh, but Dan Kelly thinking that the Heat aren't going to show up here, playing their third game in four, six game in ten, and he's on the Spurs money line. So we'll see how it uh, we'll see how it banks out. Let's move on to the next spot on the board, <clears throat> a spot I'm very interested in, very very interested. Now we'll see how everything's matured market wise. 10 p.m. Eastern, New Orleans Pelicans 29 and 21, 14 11 on the road at the LA Clippers 34 and 15, 19 and four at crypto. 19 and four. God, they're playing good basketball. Yeah, Pelican three and two over the past five, playing an 11th fastest pace, 99.2 possessions a game, hitting 49.5 from the field, 34.4% from three. Look what the Clippers just did on this road trip. It was spectacular. Seven game road trip, one loss to the Cavs. They won mm -hmm. six of seven. Look at just the last five games 51.5% from the field and 44.3% from three. Then they finish it off with that 149-144 win at Atlanta on Monday. So then on Tuesday, they fly home after being gone for, what, two and a half weeks. And, you know, I know that it's a pretty nice life they live, but they've been gone for two and a half weeks, and they got to deal with bullshit. And I want the, clip, or the Pelicans badly. But I wanted to see this market sit around for a little longer. Uh, this opened up with the Pelicans plus seven. They're now at plus six and a half. This is an important game for the Pelicans. It's not for the Clippers. This total is sitting at 231 and a half. It opened up at 231. It dropped. Now it's come back up. And then when we get to the cash flow here, we have 61% of the tickets and 86% of cash on the Pelicans. That all makes perfect sense to me. Uh, those numbers will balance out. There's going to be Clippers backers that are going to start moving on them. Uh, so I'm fine with that. And the 19% of tickets, 37% cash on the over. So to me, uh, BJ says this is a Pell spot, but he's not fucking with the Clippers right now. Too hot. Backwood doesn't, don't trust the Pells either. And <clears throat> to me, this is the absolute perfect opportunity to fade a team playing their best. It's after a seven game road trip where they look spectacular, all business. 
Now they come home, and it's not like they've been home for a long time. They get the break after this game. Right. They have to play this game, then they get to rest. Uh, This is the more I talk about it, uh, the more I want to smash the Pelicans. And I'm going to take it away, Dutch Pelicanos, a team that you've had a great read on. You've backed off it at the Clippers. Yeah, man. I'm right with you, bro. I'm right with you. Um, I I see Troy uh, towards our boy T's on the uh, Pelicanos. Uh, The DC capper liking the Clippers the other way. I hate to see that. Shout out to both of them, though. But, yeah, I'm, I, I like the Pelicanos, man. I bet it uh, seven and a half minus 115. It's good money, man. It's, it's a clear Pelicano spot here. They did lose by 16 last time they seen these boys, January uh, 5th. Uh, had won five, the prior five meetings. Now, obviously, this is a di- different Clipper team. But getting beat by 16, uh, you got the revenge factor. And they do play uh, the Clippers uh, very well. Now you got to pat the Clippers on the back, and I understand what BJ is saying. This is a very hot team. You don't want to step in front of them. I mean, Kawhi Leonard uh, is looking like the old goddamn Kawhi. James Harden's bought in. The whole damn team's playing together. Uh, shout out to Ty Lue. Got that rotation figured out. They got Zubak back in there, getting uh, on a little bit of a minutes restrictions, but he's doing his damn thing. But come on, man. Two weeks on the road. Started in north. Uh, started in uh, in the north out there uh, in Toronto. Ended in, uh, you know, ended with in Atlanta after a back to back in South Beach, a tough game on Sunday. Then they play a, a, a big tough game in, in Atlanta, find a way to win both of those games. And now they're back at the house one day's rest and, and, and going against a Pelicanos team who's actually, you know, won three straight, playing some defense, only allowing 104 points per game in those three wins. Um, I like this team, man. You know, I like this team when they're all healthy. Um, Zion's questionable. I believe. I believe he'll go tonight. I know these boys. They don't like each other. This is these two. You know. I think the Pelicanos care an awful lot more about this game than the LA Clippers do tonight. So um, I get it. Um, there's a reason why they're they're you know getting a touchdown. Uh, but at the same time, I think this will be a, a two possession game, and I think you know the Pelicanos are allowed to win this basketball game. So I, I absolutely love. Uh, the Pelicanos tonight. This was a clear play for me when I look ahead spot last night and then breaking the game down. I, I did find Toronto first half to be quite appealing, but um, Pelicanos to me are clearly the best play on the board. I, I agree. I absolutely agree. Uh, Cody Norton says Pelicans first quarter is the look. Patrick Byrne says a dangerous Clippers team. Good luck betting against them. Pelicans win, then get knocked out. Inconsistent team. <clears throat> I like that. <clears throat> I like that. <clears throat> I like the inconsistent team because you can, if you watch them long enough, you can pick and point to when they're going to step up and crypto.com against the Clippers is the spot where this team full of talent steps up in San Antonio in a meaningless spot is a team where you don't know if their head's going to be right. So I, I, I like it. Unfortunately, this is one of the spots where Dutch has, is at the mercy of giving out picks that you can bet immediately where he got the seven and a half. Uh, it's six and a half bookmakers moved it to six. If you want the six and a half, move on it now. Uh, I should probably do. I mean, the show's just about then, so I could. We got our horse race coming up as well, but so maybe I can wait 15 minutes. I hope it doesn't move to six. But, uh, but uh, if we wanted to give you the seven, no, nah, the six and a half fine. I like this game at six. When it was at the board yesterday, I seen six. I was like, I, I talked about it on ski. I was like, I'm, I'm with it. So to see the seven and a half this morning, my eyes lit up. So yeah, I, I'll take, I think anything. More than five is is really super live, you know. So perfect. Well, um, we'll give you the plus six and a half minus one hundred five. Sounds great. Okay, and I'm gonna be right with you. Yeah, as our boy Troy T says, please uh, sprinkle money, sprinkle me my sprinkle money line. He thinks Pelicanos. Yeah, I absolutely think they're live. Seven points is a lot, but when I'm betting the team seven, I think the, the, the they show up against the Clippers. They want to beat the Clippers. The Clippers are a tired basketball team. They're they're still handling business. I mean, one day to handle shipping away over two weeks. I mean, plus that's a long trip. This is a great spot for the Pelicanos, in my opinion. Very talented yeah. Clippers team. No argument. Can they win this game by seven? Absolutely. I just don't believe they will. Yeah, and they they cut. You know, they 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 leave Atlanta when at <clears throat> twelve, maybe <clears throat> one p.m. in the afternoon. Twelve in the afternoon. <clears throat> and that then was up you know, and down game two against the Hawks. Like, and they've been playing in the Eastern time zone. You know, yeah. for so long and come back to West. This is not easy, man. This is not easy. Now, it is easier going from west, East to West, obviously, but uh, I'm right there with you. Uh, and then too bad that uh, you guys will be, just be at the tail end of the live stream when this pops off because this is going to be a fun one. 
Yeah. Uh, let's roll to the final game on the board. Then we will uh, have our horse race. Patrick Burns says, got about the over here, right? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from total as much as possible. But let's talk about the final spot on the board. 10 p.m. Eastern Detroit Pistons, 6 and 43, 2 and 20 on the road at Sacramento Kings, 29, 20, 14, 8 at home with Golden One Center. Uh, Pistons been playing better basketball. Uh, Detroit yeah. 1 and 4 over their past five, 98.5 possessions a game. That's 20th fastest. Uh, but you can see in their numbers, 48.8 from the field, 38.1% from three. You could also say there's no way that they're going to keep that up. <laughs> that would be a you know a fair statement off, off of what they're doing. Uh, Bogdanovich, a game time decision, and Cunningham, a game time decision. You have to wait to find out if these guys are in, and you know Bogdanovich also going to get traded at some point here. Right. So it's um, it's um, tricky. Uh, clearly tricky. Uh, you have to wait, I guess, for the Pistons because uh, you need Kate in. And you need Bogdanovich in. Uh, this total sitting at 242. Opened up at 242. Dropped to 241 and a half for a little bit. Came back to 242. No movement. And then on the spread, we have the Pistons as 13 and a half point dogs. Opened up at 13. Dropped to 12 and a half. Got up to 13 and, 13 and a half. Let's get to the cash flow then for our final spot on the board. Uh, we have... Oh, sorry. Move up here. We have... 42% of the tickets and 64% of the cash on the Pistons. And then we have 55% of the tickets and 96% of cash on the over. Pistons coming off their third straight loss, 111.99 at home versus Magic on Sunday. This is the first of a road back-to-back. -back. Uh, they play at Portland tomorrow night. And that that gave me pause here trying to figure out really, and I, you know, are they going to care more about this game than the other game? No, they probably don't care about it either. You know, uh, uh, the Kings coming off an ugly 136-110 loss at the Cavaliers on Monday to close out a successful seven-game road trip. I mean, I think we saw the Sacramento Kings that we expected earlier in the year on this road trip, and they're coming off a loss. So then do they come home and smash and grab the Pistons? Now, it's another spot where you have the team coming from the East, you know, just like the... Uh, Clippers. The Kings went five and two. Clippers went six and one. The big difference is the Kings just got smacked up. You know, uh, interesting to hear your take on this one, Dutch. Take it away, Pistons Kings. Yeah, man. You know, I'm a big Kings guy. I like I like De'Aaron Fox. I think Sabonis is one of the more underrated big guys in the game. Um, I don't know if I'm laying this type of number though with the Sacramento Kings, Jim. Uh, you know, they are they are three and zero straight up and two and one against the uh, number last three meetings versus these boys, and this number is pretty sharp because the average margin of wins thirteen points per game in those three win in the last three wins, so it's right there on the number. Um, but one thing I will say is it, 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 they get whatever they want offensively. That they're averaging fifty five uh, percent from the field goal uh, in those three games, um, the Sacramento Kings against Detroit. So I believe. You know, Sacramento will be able to score at will against this team. But the Pistons have continuously been, uh, you know, a little grimy, man. They're 9-2 and two ATS uh, against the number last 11. Um, however, on the road, if you look to fade, if, if you want to fade the Detroit Pistons against you can look to fade them on the road. I mean, they're 1-19 straight up last 19 on the road. Um, and overall, they're just not that good of a basketball team. As we've known, they've only won three of the last 17 basketball games. So um, I do believe. The numbers that you mentioned about the Pistons has a lot to do with Kate Cunningham coming back and obviously Bogdanovich coming back. The two best offensive players on their team in the lineup, the numbers should be better. So I think they can stay a little bit more consistently in the in that range, Jim, simply because Kate Cunningham and Bogdanovich are are that good in my opinion. I think they're they're good. They're they're not that great on the defensive end, obviously, but on the offensive end, they, they, they're really good. But Bogdanovich probably will be on his way soon. Uh, but look for him to continue to, uh, you know, put the ball in the bucket. That's what that boy does. So uh, I would expect Pistons to hang around in this game, to be quite honest with you, but I'm not going to pay to see it. So um, lean towards the big number with the uh, with the Pistons. Uh, but Sacramento, probably, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a backdoor cover, if anything. Well, I like our cards, man. I like our cards. So uh, that leaves me two bets in the NBA. I'll be on the Spurs and the Pelicanos. Uh, simple, easy. I like we got it. two. Yeah, we each got a bum. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Bump. And then you're on my Raptors first half minus four. A very easy thing to cheer for. Uh, minus four, minus 105. BJ's best bet. He got in on the Warriors at minus one and a half. That was an excellent, excellent work. Patrick Burns on the Celtics minus 11 and a half. 
Uh, Dutch got the Pelicans at plus six and a half. So Dutch goes in with the Pelicans plus six and a half. Raptors first half minus four at minus 105. And Dutch, you've been a model of consistency this year on our show. Uh, I really love the way you've been capping the card. Uh, carry that over to the live stream tonight alongside Dabby Cab. Uh, get that cash live. I'll be interested to see how the Raptors game plays out for you. Uh, and I'm in discussions, and I'll have some more discussions here about um, opportunities to join you guys now on Wednesday nights here for for a while uh, before the horses start popping off. So um, I'll be in touch with you and Dabby about that. I'd love to be a part of what you guys are doing, and uh, I really like your show. So I'd like to get uh, a bottle and uh, hammer away with you guys here. So that that's one of my plans, and discussed it with the family. They know what it is. So, um, yeah. Yeah. so, you know, let's get one day, right? <laughs> I'm going to be, I'll be rocking with you. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a, for sure. Uh, I just got to do a couple of things here <clears throat> to set that up. Uh, so Dutch, excellent work. That is our NBA breakdown. We have the horse race next, uh, Dutch, get that cash, my man. Thank you for rocking with us. And, um, every Wednesday night, catch him right here. He gets to hammer the card. Uh, with us and then he sits and marinates with it all day and then it's live bet time on all about the hoop so uh and please support our guy dutch and ron crawford spreadsheet play today is the raptors it's also providence in college basketball which helps us very much uh but uh dutch my man any last words for the capers supporting the show yeah i appreciate you jim uh shout out to jose on the ones and twos everyone in the chat appreciate you be sure to check us out man we cash a lot we got as you've seen billy Briggs in the chat you know college basketball nba We'll have Dabby Cab, we have the Pimp Mikey Money, we have LJ, we'll have Trot Wham all tonight right here on Post Sports Radio, all about the hoops. Check it out. Check it out. Y'all stay fresh.